OK, primary and secondary data. So primary data is when the researcher collects the data themselves. They plan the study, they have the aim, they're the ones that create the tool, they collect the data themselves. Quite straightforward, OK? Um, so examples of that is an experiment. If they're carrying out an experiment, if you're looking at a study, that's primary data. Interviews, if the researcher is doing the interviews, that's primary data. If the, um, somebody else is doing the interviews and the researcher has got hold of the transcripts, that becomes secondary data. Um, and we'll come to that in a minute. But the inter if they're doing an interview, primary data. Um, if they made up their own questionnaire, primary data. So pretty much most things are primary data where the researcher has said, right, here's a research question. I am going to test my own research question using my methodologies. OK, now what's good about that? Well, the good thing is, is that the methodology and the data fits the aim of the research. So if you're using primary data, you know you're collecting something that will support or reject your hypotheses. Researcher knows what's gone on. They know the methods. They know about the extraneous variables, how they've controlled them. And because of that, we can say that the data has more validity. Um, it's more valid to their question, to what they they are doing. They know that um, the reason that X has caused a change in Y is because of the change in X, um, not because um, extraneous variable D has changed Y. OK, so that's good. Um, it's time consuming, though, because you've got to collect and plan. You've got to do it all yourself. You've got to work out all the problems, go and collect the data, speak to the participants. That's time consuming. Um, sometimes it's impractical to collect data, either because there is so much data that needs to be collected. Um, and so therefore it's not feasible for the researcher to do it. Or maybe because it's a bit unethical or un not accessible. Um, so, for instance, if a researcher wanted to identify students performance in an exam, it would be really un unfeasible um, for them to set up their own exams and do that when they could just collect the data from the government. Um, and that takes us on to secondary data. OK, so secondary data is when somebody else has collected the data other than the researcher. We're not talking about the researcher's assistant. They count as the researcher. But we're talking about another organisation or a completely separate researcher in their um, resources. OK. So when the researcher doesn't collect the data, but gets the data from someone else, it's secondary data. So examples of that government statistics, such as exam results, such as the number of people who have accessed the NHS for mental health. Well, whatever it is, if an, another organisation, generally the government, collects that data, there we go. Um, Meta-analysis is where you actually get three or four or, or a lot more studies, maybe 10 or 15 studies, um, and you get all of their results and you pull those results together to get one result. So, for instance, that might be used at the moment with the COVID vaccine tests, um, because each of the COVID vaccine tests are small scale tests done on small sample groups um, because they're done so quick and that they need a certain type of person to be in these vaccine tests. And also the data is not great because they need to be exposed to the vaccine. I mean, to the actual virus, not the vaccine, they get the vaccine. OK, so um, so what someone might do is maybe um, towards the end of the year, we'll say, well, look, we've got eight studies here using this one vaccine. I'm actually going to pull all of their data together. Let's mash it together and see if it is successful. OK, and that's called meta analysis. So the researcher themselves does not collect the data. They just use other people's data. Um, something else called a literature review. Um, that's the Myers and Dina study um, where what they will do is say, right, we want to talk like Myers and Dina about happiness. What makes us happy? Well, we're going to get all these pieces of research, different research, um, and we're going to look at what they've said about happiness. We're not going to pull the data. We're just going to take their conclusions and put them together. And it's called a literature review. So in all of those, the researcher themselves does not go and collect the data. So why is this good? Well, the good thing is, is you can do it from your office. You don't have to go out and collect the data. It's quick. 
Another good thing is, is that you can get hold of the access to large amounts of data or data which would be impractical for you to collect, um, like doing the um, COVID vaccine test. Um, if you're saying, well, actually, I need 2000 people, that's quite impractical to do. Um, but you could do it with 10. So why not collect um, 20 studies with 10 people in? OK, uh, that makes 200, doesn't it? Uh, 200 studies with 20 people in, that makes 2000. Right. OK, so great. Um, what's the problem? Doesn't control extraneous variables, so you don't know if actually the data you're getting is valid because you haven't collected it. And also it just might not fit the aims. They might might be doing something else. If you notice for this, the strengths of primary data are the weaknesses of secondary data. And the weaknesses of secondary data are the strengths of primary data. I think I said that right. Yeah, so really what you have to do is just remember four evaluation points and you've got them, them all, okay? So quite straightforward. In the exam, very rarely um, do they ask questions on it, but they might.